Uh, Hello and welcome to the Film Pulse Podcast. This is episode number 427. My name is Adam Patterson. With me today, we've got Kevin Rickstraw. Hey, Kevin. Hello. This week on the show, we'll be talking about New York Ninja, which is a movie from 1984 that was lost. It was lost to time. And Mm -hmm. the good folks at Vinegar Syndrome found it. And they were like, hey, you know what? This is not done. Let's finish it and put it out there for the world to see. So that's what happened. We'll also be going over this week's new releases in theaters, VOD and Blu-ray. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Please remember to review us on iTunes if you get a moment. That would be extremely helpful. Let's go ahead and jump into New York Ninja. This is directed by John Liu and Curtis Spieler. I have a synopsis here. After his wife is murdered, a man becomes a ninja to take revenge on her killers across the streets of New York in this film that was originally abandoned in 1984 until it was discovered and completed by Vinegar Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, this is this is kind of one that it's like the uh, like the story behind it is almost more interesting than the movie itself. It's kind of one of those. Oh, no. No doubt. Yeah, it's kind of kind of one no of those doubt. situations. I love I love it when this happens. I feel like there's at least one a year where it, it does seem that way. There's like one lost movie a year that that ends up coming out that that gets that gets found and and um this one is kind of an interesting one because you know with a lot of these movies the movie's like pretty much done like with Grizzly was it Grizzly two. Mm-hmm. That movie was like pretty much done. It just never came out. So they just had to like kind of finish it. But this one, this one was like in a much more unfinished state. So there was no audio, first of all, uh, and it was not edited. So really all you had was the footage. So yeah. what Vinegar Syndrome did was they edited it. So they had to edit this whole movie, put it and piece it together. And they had to add all the audio including the the dialogue so what they did was they got a a a really in my opinion solid voice cast to to do this i think it's kind of a a fitting voice voice cast and including uh linnea quigley um barbara crampton you have uh hold on pull it up here uh, Michael Berryman's in there. Cynthia Rothrock, which I was really excited to learn. Uh, Leon Isaac Kennedy. So you have these kind of classic cult 80s style actors in doing the voices of the, the characters in this movie. So I thought that it was a really good fit to have that. Uh, the the score, the new the new music that was added, I think is really fitting. I think that they did a really good job with the music. I mean, it, it doesn't feel contemporary at all to me. Like, I think that the music sounds like it just fits perfectly within one of these, like, you know, low budget, shitty eighties, uh, action movies or whatever, exploitation films, what have you. So I think they did a great job and the movie looks good too. Like just from a like technical perspective, like the, the quality is very good. So that was impressive to me. Uh, the movie itself is garbage. It's, I want to say hilariously bad at times. I mean, some of it, you're just like, what? It, it, some of the choices that are, that, that are made in this movie are absolutely baffling. So my initial impressions are, I think it's really, it's a really cool idea. I love visiting these lost movies. I, I think that, Anytime one of these movies is, is sort of found that it, that it should be put out for the world, because I mean, clearly there was a lot of work put into creating this movie. And I think that it's really cool that now there's an audience for it. Like there, there people can see this. Yeah. But the movie itself is bad. <laughs> like, yes. let's, let's just be real. Yeah. It's a bad movie. No, it's yeah. It's very bad. And I was, I was, there was a part of me that was really hoping that this would be, in that, you know, laughably bad, you know, kind of hilarious in its ineptitude. But unfortunately, like, it's not really because it's like, it's just not good. But it's also like, 
um, like a, a, a modicum of competency here. Like they they do an okay job of like making a movie, which just isn't that fun, really. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is like the the choreography, the fight choreography. It's just so incredibly lame, <laughs> yeah. and it's just so slow. Yeah, I mean, so and, like I think I think you would have a better job with like kids coming up with fight choreography. Like the thing is that that John Liu is clearly a skilled martial artist. Like he he definitely, and th- this is. Uh, is it the first movie? I think it might be the first movie. Now, he directed some other movies, too. He did Zen Kwon Do, Strikes Paris, Made in China, and Dragon Blood before before this one. And then New York Ninja was the last movie that he directed. But, I mean, he was in a whole bunch of movies during the big kung fu craze of the, the 70s and into the 80s. And so he's clearly a skilled martial artist, but the... I agree. The choreography in this is so lame that it's, it's just boring. It is like the slowest, Mm -hmm. lamest ass choreography, which is very detrimental when you're watching a movie that is supposed to be predominantly for the action. (laughs) Like the the action is so boring. Yeah. That's supposed to be the centerpiece. And when your centerpiece is that boring, and like you said, you can you can tell you know that this guy has the skills, but like when you're watching it play out on film, it's honestly like they were filming like the rehearsals, where he's like, "Okay, I'm holding you here. You're gonna come forward. I'm gonna kick you in the face. Yeah, and- this guy from the left, and I'm gonna do this move, and it's all like really really slow. Like everyone's learning their moves and their cues, but that's unfortunately the final product and the thing is like i wonder if i wonder if some of this was like almost like you don't maybe because i don't know if you noticed but like the weapons that they use they're using like just wood like pieces of wood and like like knives like like the there's one scene where he fights a bunch of these dudes that have wooden knives and it's like why why wouldn't i mean this is new york like you can find knives why why are they just using pieces of wood as weapons? It's that just it's tries, bizarre. The guy tries to do like the flippy thing. <laughs> he dropped yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was an also so, there's also a great scene when the guy throws the knife at, at him and he and the and uh John Lou just catches it and cuts him with the knife. Which it, that could very well be. It could very well be because so much of it does seem that way, where it's just like there's no way that this was the finished product. Yeah, it's like just, this is just them walking through it. Yeah, it, it, so it may, maybe who who knows? There's a lot of really goofy shit that happens in this movie. I mean, the I, I love the scene when it's it's right after he decides to become the New York Ninja, and New York in this movie is so riddled with crime. I mean, you just have roving gangs everywhere, just attacking it's... indiscriminately, just attacking everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you leave your car out, it's getting destroyed. If you're walking down the street, you're getting attacked by a, a, a vicious gang of people who are apparently dressing up as mummies. And well, I, I also love they're dressing up as you got mummies. You got the warriors knockoffs. You got guys just wearing jock straps on the outside of their <laughs> jeans. You got guys doing like voodoo paint on their faces and shit. Like there's so much going on, but you also have where it seems like there's so many gangs mm-hmm. and they're so desperate and thirsty and hungry to fuck people up that you just have gangs like joining other gangs. Well, like that... he's getting chased by like the zombie <laughs> yeah. guy and then like a biker guy just shows up like I'm going to fuck you up. And then there's just you have, it's the Warriors knockoff guys. You have the biker guy show up trying to fuck him up. But you also just have a rogue station wagon. Like, I'd, a 48-year-old man just decided, like, yeah, I'm getting in on this action. Like, <laughs> I'm fucking this dude up on roller skates. This is, this is my Friday afternoon now. I love the scene when 
you have the the main bad guy and he gets attacked by a gang and then the two of those groups get attacked by the New York Ninja and then that guy the main bad guy tells the other gang to go get him and they're and they comply so it's like <laughs> wait a minute in that span of like 15 seconds we just saw a complete change in in, in the power dynamic here like first of all th- this gang was attacking the the bad guy with the sunglasses and now they're working for him like all in yeah. the span of 10 no. seconds it's like it's like gangs have been socialized in, in new york in yeah. the 80s and it's there's like a gang union and they're just they're all together there's they're just they're all together they're, they're working for the same team and that's that's ganged them there's right? an yeah and there's another scene earlier on in the movie when you see there's like a guy who is smoking a cigar and reading a newspaper and he's like burning a hole in the newspaper because he's reading it so close no reason for that no reason to show us that but but then like he gets attacked by a gang and then there's like other people there's like other gang members involved and then at the end they all just join each other it's yeah. like what what the hell's happening in this world? It's such a such a weird, wacky eighties New York There's, representation. I, I, and I think it's I think it's inspirational in a way. You have a solidarity among the gangs, which, you know, if we could get that nowadays, it just everyone comes together for a common goal. They're all fighting alongside each other. Doesn't matter about affiliations, whatnot. They have one goal, and that's to take out the New York Ninja, and also attack every woman they see, every person, every every they... woman, steal every purse, destroy every car, just mm-hmm. pure anarchy. Correct, correct. The only one with any class is Rat Tail. Oh, that's well, the only guy. We'll we'll get to Rat Tail. I mean, I think, like honestly, I I feel like the bulk of this review is just going to be about Rat Tail. Yes. My 100%. favorite anyway, before I got like completely sidetracked, my favorite scene is when he is watching the the boy, the the young kid get attacked and he waits like 5 minutes while this gang is beating up this little boy before he gets involved and they make a big deal about him jumping off this roof down onto the ground and it, but it's like seriously, it's not even like one story up it's like a it's like it's like a five yeah. foot drop and they like they do it in slow motion and it's like it turns it looks so silly and then they have guns <laughs> and they start <laughs> sh- they start shooting at him but he starts doing these like front hand springs to like i guess dodge the bullets but it doesn't work he just immediately gets shot and and falls to the ground and then the kid gets shot uh it's great it's amazing. Lots oh, of uh, yeah. lots of front hands, uh, unnecessary flips and handsprings in this movie. <laughs> like the mm-hmm. one, there's like one scene where he does like a handspring over a little, a little tree root <laughs> that's on the ground. Like, dude, you could more quickly just hop over the damn thing. But yeah, that's that's how we. Yeah, but I mean, outside of that, you also have the sequence of him on roller skates. That's the not roller that's, blades. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the best scenes. Like. So there's like one scene of him as New York Ninja. And then the next scene, he's New York Ninja, but he's on roller skates. And it's like, whoa, Mm -hmm. like, are we, is he just going to be on roller skates for the rest of the movie now? Or like, what, what are we doing here? Like, well, the best part of that sequence is that he's on roller skates and he's fighting people. And again, it looks terrible because you can't fight on those old school roller skates. Like it, it looks terrible. But then, like, halfway through, he doesn't have the roller skates on, and he does, like, some flips and stuff, but then he's back on the roller skates when he lands, <laughs> and that's when everyone gets together. It's it's the gangs, it's the bikers, it's the guy in the station wagon with the, the wood paneling. They all, like, and there's, like, there's tourists, like, following around. Filming it, yeah. Filming it on the camcorder. Like, it's just... Man, it's pandemonium. It's just it's it's, a, and I just love you know classic New York. Everyone's just like, oh well, yeah, just going about my business. I gotta get to work. I don't have time for this. Yeah, I got time for this shit. 
kidding me? The yeah, the I think the the roller skate thing is was threw me for a loop. <laughs> that that, just, that yeah, really I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the rollers. Like I'm just wondering the the how it works. Like, did he see the crime, then put on the roller skates? Or did he already have the roller skates on and was just, like, rolling around town looking for crime? Like, the process. He had to have them already on. Like, I mean, the logistics of carrying around those old school roller skates, which they're bulky, and they take some time to put on. You can't just slip those on. True. And you yeah, gotta exactly. have other shoes. You gotta have, what, he's got some flats. Somewhere that he's walking yeah. around in. They have like store- he's got to pop. Yeah, he's got to pop off the flats. He's got to sit down, put on the roller skates, lace them up, make sure his feet are secure because he's going to be fighting. He knows he's going to be fighting, and he's got to carry around the flats. I don't know in a back pocket belt, just in his hands, something. And then he's switching. Come on, come on now. <laughs> That's. Yeah, but he never puts on the roller skates again. It's just that one scene. Just that one scene. Well, with I the... think he learned his lesson. He was just like, this, this is not... a terrible idea. Yeah, this is not very conducive. Like, like come on. Wear, wearing them shits on some fucked up sidewalks? Exactly. New York sidewalks? Come on. Especially in the 80s when everything was, like, crumbling <laughs> in New York? Yeah, they were not making sure that those were a handicap accessible. Yeah, I mean, it's bad now. Back then, it was like... A... Nightmare. Yeah, back then they didn't even care about people in wheelchairs. I mean, local governments, their stance on the disabled in the 80s, 70s, and so on was fuck off, stay in your house. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of New York is still like incredibly inaccessible. Still a lot of cities, honestly. Yeah. Not just New York. I want to talk about the main bad guy because there's an interesting dynamic with him where I don't know what's going on there. His skin melts, no like his body, he's like dealing with some sort of body melt issue. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it ever addressed? Like, did I miss, I, did I miss something? It's, it, yeah, you did. You, you, you need some visual comprehension classes here. Okay. Well, I know it's clearly. light. It's light that does it. But, well, he's sensitive to light. Yeah. But his issue now is, since he was in the military, there was some sort of thing, who knows what it was, involving nuclear whatnots, that it seems like he's now addicted to plutonium. Oh, okay? Uh, okay. I missed that. So he's got to get his plutonium kick. I'm not sure how this works. I think he just touches it. He has it in that box or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's got to say, I, I don't know why he has to take the gloves off. And that melts his skin, but it doesn't hurt his eyes. That's just a side effect that his eyes are now sensitive to light. But it doesn't really seem to stop him all that much because they do. They utilize that at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it seems to hurt him, but he bounces back rather quickly, I thought. But yeah. Just the plutonium angle. Just he's like a radioactive man. There's a there's a scene where he's assaulting a woman and he's like melting her mm-hmm. too. So so he's very radioactive. I don't know how he's alive, really. Why not? Why not? Just throw it in there. <laughs> and then I guess his crone, like his one of his henchmen, is Rat Tail, right? That, that rat tail's working for him. Now we're fucking talking at him. And rat this tail, is... very interesting character. I feel like I would like rat tail to come back at some point. Mm-hmm. I, I want a deeper exploration into rat tail. Like, correct. Cause they don't really, they don't really describe, like we don't know why he puts the rat tail in his mouth. Does it give mm-hmm. him power? I mean, because presumably it it must, because he very specifically puts it in his mouth and then fights with the rat tail still in his mouth. I think it's either one of two things. There's there's a power aspect there that he like all of his his power is stored in the rat tail, which would make sense. Now I totally get that. And you put it in your mouth and then it the you know, you kinda internalize and consume that power, and then that power radiates 
throughout you. I would right? also that assume, makes sense. yeah, I would also assume that the longer the rat tail, the more power. So yeah. as he continues to grow it out, he becomes more powerful. Yes. And then I think also the, like the power that kind of pulses through that rat tail is, I would imagine is kind of uneven and a bit unruly. So you would have to braid it. And I think that's the idea here is that he's, he's braiding it to kind of consolidate the power to control it. God, yeah. So do you think, and making it a more, uh, a more, um, a better conduit, Mm. let's say. Okay. But also on the flip side, the other thing that it could be is it could just be like an anxiety thing. Like it just oh, like it makes him feel like better. A, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a He's just like, thing. okay, shit. Yeah, shit's going to get real. Getting Let a little nervous. In my mouth. Yeah. yeah. Getting a little nervous. Time to suck on the rat tail. Mm-hmm. Okay. That could be too. I like to think that it's a power thing. Like he's actually sucking the power. The, the power is stored in the rat tail itself. And he's exuding. He's, he's extracting the power mm-hmm. from the rat tail by putting it in his mouth and sucking on it. Mm-hmm. Just sucking on that rat tail all day. Pulling, yeah. pulling its power, consuming it. Mm. Okay. He also has I mean, this I'm, like uh, cane thing yeah, that he like, rubs on his face <laughs> for some reason. It's just, this guy, I'm telling you. <laughs> and to they be, fucked up. Like, to be they clear, didn't know who the main <laughs> character was. I'm sorry. Like his name, his character name is Rat Tail. So we're not just calling him Rat. Like his his actual character name in I didn't know that. is is Rat Tail. So I didn't I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, there's Rat Tail. There's Street Lion. There's Switchblade. There's Freddy Cufflinks. Yeah, I know who one of those is, and that's Rat Tail. I don't know any of the other people. Well, Freddy Cufflinks is the one who killed the the girlfriend. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. That and makes that, sense. That's how. He, that's how when I, I mean, New York honestly, Ninja found him, he saw the cufflinks because the guy was still wearing one of the, even though, yeah. even though he, he lost one of the cufflinks days later, yeah. he was still wearing just the one with the other missing one. He didn't, he only has one set. <laughs> He's like, fuck dress it. for success, Adam. <laughs> well, don't trust for the job you have dress for the job you want. <laughs> I, I liked that scene too, because there was, I don't know if it was that same scene or a different scene where at one point New York Ninja for, just randomly puts the cufflink in his mouth and like sucks on it, like bites it. Don't know why that happened, but getting back to rat tail, he does. Yeah. He has this like cane thing that he rubs on his face. And then there's a great scene when he fights New York ninja and he has like a sword. And then also the cane thing. And he like twirls him around and stuff. And then he throws the cane for some reason. Like Mm -hmm. why not keep that and use it as a secondary weapon? I don't know, but I think maybe it's, Drawing from that power, the rat tail is a double-edged sword. You know, it gives you the power, gives you the confidence, because, again, it could be, we don't entirely know, it could be a, an anxiety thing, like a, like a social anxiety disorder type mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe when you take in too much, there's a bit of overconfidence and a bit of hubris uh, that, that comes into play. That and you're just like, likely. I don't need, I do not need this second weapon. I am rat tail. It is braided. I have confidence in myself. Yeah. No way this ninja is going to beat me. And honestly, on paper, it, it, ninja should not win. I've seen him fight throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, I mean, he's okay. They just shoot him, honestly. Yeah. Just but shoot, I think Rat Tail should have prevailed. Stab him with one of your wooden knives. <laughs> I think Rat Tail should have prevailed. Because honestly, after that point, I just didn't care. I only cared about Rat Tail, honestly. It's the only reason I watched this fucking movie. I could not care less about New York Ninja. That dude can fuck off. He's a boring character. He's not very interesting. He actually reminded me of Tommy Wiseau a little bit. Like, there were definitely some some scenes in here where I was getting some some the room vibes. Yeah, especially that rooftop. The, the rooftop, rooftop scene stuff. specifically, <laughs> yeah. Definitely getting some... Uh, the room vibes here. And I don't know, like, I don't know how much of that was John Liu's performance or the voice actor or like what the, you know, what the, who the culprit was, but yeah, it's pretty rough. I just honestly think that rat tail might be top three characters in all of cinema. (laughs) 
Honestly, like, it's just, that's just incredible. Like, when I watched that trailer, it stopped me dead in my tracks, where I was just like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I yeah, watched cause... it again to make sure, because I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't think that's what happened. But I watched it again, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I, uh, I, I showed you the trailer. We were, we were talking about what we wanted to cover this <laughs> week, and I showed you the trailer, and it was right then and there confirmed that it was Rat Tail that did it. And that's what solidified it. As soon as I, as soon as I went back and verified that that I that is indeed what I saw with my eyes, I was like, "We were watching this because I need to know everything about this person." <laughs> uh, I do like that they that they teased LA Ninja. Yes, at, they're at the very end. presumptuous. <laughs> Everyone was sucking on that rat tail dude. Just I'm a but bit I, overconfident. I'm pretty sure that that was added by vinegar syndrome, but I, I just like the idea of them somehow figuring out a way to make a sequel to this. Is that is that them hiding something up them up their sleeve? Do they have LA Ninja footage? Oh my god! Can you imagine? Watch out next year! I'm telling you. But who gives a shit? Rat Tail's not there. That's true. Well, maybe they'll have like a an equivalent. A rat tail equivalent. It's, there's no equivalent to braided rat rat tail that you bite down on and you fence. You say that, but I don't know. The '80s brought with it a lot of really great characters. Maybe it's a mullet I mean, person. No, maybe the a only great thing that person. No, not a mullet. The only thing that would work for me is a bowl cut. Oh yeah, oh, that would be good. I mean, like a dramatic bowl cut. I like the mullets, like the the eighties, like bodybuilder, like Venice Beach bodybuilder types that have like those ridiculous sunglasses on and the the tank tops yeah. that are like super super thin. Like, what's the point of wearing them? And then, like that's, I, I would like to see that type of character come back for LA Ninja, and I just, he be like the heavy. I hear you, I hear you, but I also think that a a dramatic bowl cut is far more cinematic. You got a lot more movement, I think, especially with spins and such. Yeah, and you got to make sure, like, they got to really condition that hair so that it's got a lot of volume and and is, oh, is you, very kinda... very shows a lot of movement. Every time you move the head, yeah. all the hair is mm-hmm. just going. It's just going up like yeah. like crazy. It's almost like a bob cut where it kind of curls in mm. at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, love that. Good good bowl cut. <laughs> Uh, so that's New York Ninja. I don't think we need to rate it. It's a bad movie, but it's garbage. I I laughed more than a couple times. I think that it's 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 an oddity. It's like if you're looking for mm-hmm. kind of an interesting oddity, check it out. I I just I like what Vinegar Syndrome did. I hope that they and other companies like uh, the American uh, genre film archive. What is that? I think that's the name of it uh, uh, right. <laughs> yeah I, I hope that companies like that uh, and organizations like that continue to unearth these lost movies and and take the the time and care to to you know bring them to uh audiences because I, I just i think it's great and i think that it's also incredibly sad when movies like this just disappear into into nothingness so i think that that's really cool but yeah the movie itself, you know, don't don't go into it like thinking that it's gonna be uh uh what the fuck was that? Um what was the other martial arts one that was like lost and then got re released? The Alamo Draft House put it out. Was that Miami Connection? Miami Connection, yeah. Don't don't expect yeah. this to be Miami Connection, because I mean Miami Connection is like <laughs> the fucking king of lost martial arts movies, but it's yeah, there's there's still some fun moments in here. Let's go ahead and talk about some of what we've been watching. Kevin, I think uh, we'll start with you this week. What do you got? Uh, the, the first thing, and this is really quick, and that's just The Guilty. This is on Netflix. This is, is it, the Fuqua, uh, like, uh, this is a American remake. remake. Yeah. Yes. Of the 2018 film. I did not. I name. saw the original. I did not see this one. Yes. The original, if you remember, Danish movie, Gustav Muller, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was very tense, mm-hmm. and it has that 
that uh, the angle of it is that it's just a guy, this demoted cop, who's working the like, like the nine one one beat. Essentially, he's just taking calls, emergency yeah. calls, and you know he's doing that thing. And the camera's just on him and his headset taking this call that has some twists and turns. But the thing is, with the Danish film, never cuts away from that guy. It just always stays locked in on him working his shift, which to me was what made it work, right? Well, that was the whole hook. That was like... Yeah. That was the gimmick of the whole movie. Correct. So, when you know that there's an American remake going to happen which it did. It's on Netflix with Jake Gyllenhaal in the, the lead role. You already have, or at least I did, you already have some ideas of like how they're going to Americanize it. That's why I didn't watch this. <laughs> yes. Uh, you might think like, oh, an American director won't be able to help themselves. They're going to have to cut away from Jake Gyllenhaal being on the headset. Like they just, they're not going to be able to control themselves. They're going to be, they're just going to cut away which is going to just completely undermine everything. And let me tell you, they do that twice. Mm. And what do they do it what do they do it for? A very close up shot of a tail light for like a second. That's it. An out of focus up close shot of a tail light for like a second. That's it. So that's already dumb as hell cuz not only did you did you undermine the the main aspect of the original film you did it in a way that was like completely unnecessary it's just pointless i don't need to see a tail light i know someone's pulling someone over i can figure it out uh and then the other thing is they of course make it they kind of give it a happy ending instead of the original being like bleak as hell yeah well i'm not surprised yeah so that's the guilty I think that the consensus here is that you should see the original one instead. Oh, and I think you'll, definitely. you'll like that a lot more than whatever's happening in this remake. Uh, I didn't really have anything this week. I've just been super busy with uh, <clears throat> stuff. So I, I got a couple, just a couple things that I can mention that I saw uh, around Halloween time. And uh, the first one was horror noir. This is on Shudder. The, the conceit here is that uh, a few years ago, they released, uh, Shudder released a documentary called Horror Noir. And it was basically about black representation in horror. And it was a really good documentary. It was awesome, actually. And they kind of took that and decided to turn it into an anthology film. So there's, it's six, six different stories. Uh, most of them are bad. In fact, I would say all of them are bad. <laughs> like it's, it's almost like this is sort of a, it's like a tales from the hood type of thing. M- mm. Like most of the stories have some sort of uh, like social commentary attached to them, but uh, well, one or two of them don't seem to have any kind of like message. And the ones that do feel very like overt and take seem to take themselves way too seriously. Whereas like with Tales from the Hood, like the messaging is there, but it's also really fun. So and I'm talking about the original one, not the sequels. But yeah, I can't I can't really recommend Horror Noir. It's definitely disappointing. <clears throat> like some of the stories are good, but most of them are, are forgettable. Well, I have watched something on Shudder. And that's the classic, The Beyond, from 1981. Oh, okay. Fulci, uh, which I think after watching this and being completely blown away with Don't Torture a Duckling, that mm-hmm. I, I'm just going to watch everything by him. Because, I mean, The Beyond is just incredible. It doesn't make a lick of sense, at least it didn't to me, outside of this woman inherits a hotel in louisiana built on top of one of the gates to hell Mm -hmm. which good enough that's great i like that setup it's just it but it's just utilized in the sense of just 
absolute incredible gore. Just people being murdered. Big cast of characters trying to get this hotel up and running, and they all die. Everyone just dies, and it's incredible. The way everyone dies is just, my goodness. It's like a greatest hits of <laughs> gore, really. Just so much going on that it's you, you can't help but just be like, okay. At a certain point, I just stopped caring completely about the story. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cave in to the fact that I don't think this makes sense, and I don't think it's ever going to make sense. But I really enjoy what I'm seeing, so I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna focus on that. And just take the visuals as they come. Story, narrative, don't really care about that. If it ends up coming together, great, that's a bonus. If not, whatever, that's fine. And uh, it didn't really come together for me in any uh, meaningful sense. But the visuals just worked so much. Yeah. And it's just absolutely bad shit that they just let a woman inside of the, like, the morgue autopsy area that she's just able to do whatever she wants to do and of course that has negative side effects of her having i think like three gallons of acid from an open container fall directly on her face (laughs) and then her small child gets her head exploded later on in the movie which chef's kiss (laughs) yes Fucking incredible. You, yeah. Oh my god. I love it. I need to watch every single movie by this guy. Yeah, I want to continue. I, I have... I definitely haven't seen enough Fulci. Because... Did, did you see Zombie? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you Which saw... Which is Zombie... Zombie, I, I liked because it was batshit insane. But at the same time, I didn't think it was really, like, a good movie. I was just like, okay, this is kind of like a a novel thing. Yeah. Now, to torture a duckling, I was like, this is just a straight up great movie. Yeah. This is fantastic. You should check out uh New York Ripper. New oh, York I will. R- New York Ripper's on Shutter. And uh that one's really awesome. Hell yeah. And um I I'm gonna I I haven't seen City of the Living Dead. That's one of his more popular ones. And I I'm think I'm gonna try to give that a look maybe i want to see that i also want to see the psychic i've been wanting to see that yeah that's a a that's a very popular one of his too and i've never seen that either so yeah yeah i definitely want to see more fulci um the only other one that i'll mention is great white this is a shutter one as well i think it dropped this weekend this past weekend it's directed by martin wilson It's a shark movie. You know, most of these shark movies that come out these days are like the kind of sci-fi ones, uh, asylum type ones, like six 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 headed shark tornado or whatever the fuck. And um, this one seemed a little bit more like a regular old Jaws clone. And the thing about it is that it was like just, there's nothing to this movie. It was just so generic like why did it even exist i was just scratching my head the whole time like there's no reason for this movie to exist there's nothing about it that sets it apart from literally any other shark attack movie like i would compare it more closely to something like um the uh what what are the ones there's two of them and they're about alligator attacks it's like black Black water, mm. dark water, black something or other. <laughs> Can't remember. I know exactly. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're they're the two. Those two movies are based on true stories. Apparently, this one's based on a true story too. But the other ones, the black water ones, are more based on true stories, like more so. And those are far more interesting than what happens in this movie. What you have here is these uh it was like a, a charter like a plane charter type thing and the this group of people the the plane gets downed in the ocean and they're on a raft and the, the a shark attacks them 
And that's that's pretty much what you have here. It's really bad CG on the shark. It's just it's garbage. Not worth not mm. worth it. That's unfortunate. All right, let's take a look at what we have in theaters this week. The big one is Ghostbusters Afterlife. That's happening this weekend, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Do you have any interest in this? Uh, nope. 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 I do. I'm interested. Uh, I, I think it'll well, be fun. Yeah. I think it'll be a fun time. I mean, it's one of those things I'll watch like a couple of years from now when it shows up on streaming somewhere. All right. You were you were uh you were really excited with the 2016 one when that when that came out. Yeah. I remember you and went, I enjoyed that. You went to see that one, I remember. Yeah. And something about this one is not just, as I, exciting. Yeah, it's just it's I don't know. It's like it seems way too sentimental. Like like there's too much it, it seems like it leans too on the serious side. I don't need that. I want Ghostbusters to be fun. Yeah, I heard it I heard it is actually a bit of a tearjerker. Yeah, I don't want that from Ghostbusters. Like I have a feeling that I'm I'm wondering if the ghost of Harold Ramis is gonna show up at some point. I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't either, but I mean I hope that I I mean it seems like it's a respectful film, so I, I hope that if they do something like that, that it's that it's, you know, respectful and and does a good job of honoring him i guess we'll see so uh that's about that's really it for theaters if vod this week we got ankle biters coming out that's a uh, looks like a coming of age comedy maybe we got motherly it's a horror movie Single mothers attacked by a vengeful couple who believe she's responsible for their daughter's murder uh, we got chocolate road this looks like a documentary about chocolate. We have Vandal. Uh, it's a th- maybe drama or thriller involving a graffiti crew in Miami. Got a one called Multiverse. Mm. This is a Saban Films, so there you have that one. Introducing Jodea, uh, drama. Got The Pebble and the Boy. The Feast. This is actually one that I would recommend. This is a this is a really kind of a bizarre thriller, and it's uh it's in the Gaelic language, or no, I'm sorry, mm. not Gaelic, uh, Welsh. Huh. It's in Welsh. Huh. But yeah, I would I would definitely recommend checking that one out if you're looking for a, kind of a weird. I don't. I I almost want to say like it kind of reminded me of um uh. Oh fuck! Dog tooth, like sort of. Okay. But not. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, the Rumper Butts, which is a dumb-looking comedy. We got Hide and Seek, another Saban Films release. Uh, sorry, these are on the nineteenth. So starting with the Feast, Rumper Butts, Hide and Seek. That's on Friday. Also on Friday we have Alpha Rift. Looks like some kind of. Hmm, I don't know action sci-fi action movie zeros and ones that's a thriller with ethan hawk that's the new abel ferraro one. Oh yeah that's right yeah uh free land got she paradise swing that's uh it's about a rowing team stars michael shannon michael shannon uh-huh we got a yeah. house on the bayou that's gonna be on epics on Netflix, we got uh, The Princess Switch 3, Romancing the Star. That's going to be on the 18th. And then on Friday the 19th, we have Tick, Tick, Boom, which I know you're, like, super excited for. You're all about the Tick, Tick, Boom. Tick, Tick, Boom. This, is, this sounds dumb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> it, there's, oh, so many, there's so many check, check marks here that... that, that are all the right boxes for you. You got Andrew Garfield, you got musical, you got Lynn Manuel Miranda directing it. You got that poster. Oh which yeah. Is... <laughs> oh God. Uh, the worst movie of 2021 <laughs> calling it right now. It's just garbage. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, I have really no, um, yeah. he needs to be stopped. 
Miranda. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also on Netflix, we have uh, Tiger King Two. That's a, that's a series. That's going to be a series, but some something worth noting that Tiger King Two is going to be dropping on the seventeenth. Was it just like more the the documentary? It's uh yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the follow up. It catches up with him now. What I mean, he's been in jail. What is there to catch up on? Well, there. I think they do interview him from. They do video okay. interviews with him from prison, and then. Okay. You know they're they're gonna be diving more into the Carol Baskin stuff too. I think. The gotcha. murder and all of that. Gotcha. Now Alleged. that we're, you know, that was something that just really helped out when it dropped it being like the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, I mean, it was, yeah, it was the perfect, the perfect time. I mean, I, now I don't care about any of those people at all or that yeah. story. <laughs> it's just, yeah, they really hooked us there for that, like one or two weeks. Or well, and I think because it was still early on, like, I think I was still in the mindset of just being dumb and naive of being like, okay, we just got to like hang out in our houses for like two weeks. That's what and I then thought. Everything too, will yeah. go back to normal. So I'll watch this for those two weeks that I'm stuck in my house. But now that, you know, this is two years ongoing, like f- fuck Tiger King. I mean, I'll watch it just, just to see what, I, I mean, I feel like it's more of a cash grab than, than anything. Like really how much could have transpired over the last year or two, yeah. you know, that we wouldn't have heard about already just because yeah. these people are so high profile now that if something noteworthy happened, I think that we would all know about it, you know, like Carol Baskin on dancing with the stars or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. As long as they, as long as they have a clip of that, <laughs> that rap song that that dude made Carol Baskin. I uh, love it. <laughs> Um, Extinct also comes out on Netflix. It's an animated one. What? Two creatures known as Flummels find themselves transported from 1835 to modern day Shanghai. Mm, They're donut shaped animals. Yeah, I see that. (laughs) They discover traffic, trans fats, and worst of all, Flummels are now extinct. So... Yeah, this looks so like it's the, a. This looks like it's just uh one that's appeasing our Chinese overlords. It's just it's interesting that those are the three things that they discover: traffic, trans fats, and that they're extinct. On Blu-ray this week, we have Mad Max: The Road Warrior coming out in 4K. Uh, it looks like all of the Mad Max movies are dropping in 4K, including Fury Road, and there's going to be an anthology collection that's coming out that includes all of them including thunder road so that's that's pretty cool fury road not thunder road uh maniac cop is coming out uh looks like that's coming out in 4k so blue underground is dropping the maniac cop trilogy in 4k Uh, the new Candyman movie is coming out jungle cruise we have vanilla sky coming out that's on that like paramount presents collection prisoners of a ghost land coming out in 4k that's the sheen sono one with nicholas cage that's worth a look if you haven't seen that yet let's see what else we got here sailor suit and machine gun from 1981 that's coming out on arrow it's got an awesome cover um let's see yakuza princess from earlier this year is coming out you know that one seems on the surface that would be right up my alley but when i saw the trailer for it like it just did nothing for me. I didn't end up seeing really? it. Yeah. I don't hmm. know. Crypto Zoo's coming out. That's the animated one that, that came out uh, that dropped a few months ago. Caveat. That's one that I would recommend. That's a weird one, too. It's a horror movie about a... It's a, about a guy who gets a job looking after a woman... But the caveat is that he has to wear this like harness that prevents him from entering certain. Oh rooms. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was it. Was that was interesting? Uh, let's see what else we have here. Wife of a Spy. We got Modern Vampires from 1998. 
Fast and Furious nine movie collection. Ooh, get all of them. Watch out. Get all of them until the new one comes out next year and renders that box set useless. Correct. We got the Far Country from 1954. Yeah, that's pretty much it. What about Criterion's? We got two. We have Mall on Drive. Getting that 4K UHD edition. Oh boy. Watch out. I do like that under the special features, you know, you got one step footage, you got interviews from 2015, all that. And then the one bullet point just says deleted scene. <laughs> just one. So I don't know if they forgot to put an S there or if there's just honestly one scene and that's it. That's all you get. Yeah, maybe. It's a box set. And that's the complete films of Once Upon a Time in China. Jet Li. Hmm. Nice. So, to get excited for that, I'd probably wait until they do that, you know, 50% off sale, and then pick it up. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I think that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. You can send us your questions and topics to podcast at filmpulse.net. Uh, you can send us a tweet at FilmPulseNet, at FilmPulseKevin. And if you could consider reviewing us on iTunes, that would be great. For Kevin Rakestraw, my name's Adam Patterson. We'll see you next week.